Hello, I'm James from Woodland Classroom and in this video I'm going to be showing you how I teach children basic fire lighting skills so then they can have their own little campfires out in the woods with us. I'm going to show you my method which uses this basic tinder box. If you haven't seen the video that explains what's in this, click on the link so you can get up to speed. Whoa! Yeah, that's a big fire. Yeah. Kids love lighting fires. Out of all the activities we do, it's the one we get asked to do time and time again by them. They never seem to get tired of it. So why do kids love it? Well, one word, danger. Kids love things that are dangerous. And it's our job, and it's gonna be your job, to control that danger and manage that risk. So I've got a safe method here that I've had a lot of success with, and I'm gonna pass that on to you. There's one more thing you need to think about, which is very important. Have you got permission of the landowner to have campfires? Okay, taking you back to high school, can you remember the fire triangle? A fire needs three things to keep burning. Number one, fuel. In this case, it's going to be wood. Number two, it needs oxygen from the air to burn. And number three, it needs heat. So before we even start our fires, we've got to think of the safe place to have them. And when you're starting out, there's a few areas which I'd really avoid in setting up your campfire. Firstly, we wouldn't have a campfire in an area of long dry grass. Think about the fire spreading. Secondly, against the stump of a tree. We don't want to cause a fire scar or damage a tree in any way. Thirdly, on peaty ground. And lastly, you wouldn't want to have a fire under an area with really low overhanging branches. Okay, so we've chosen our fire site. And before we begin, just a few safety points to consider. Is long hair tied back safely? Any uh, loose dangling clothing, is that made secure? Also, have we got a source of water close by so we can extinguish the fire quickly or deal with any accidental burns we might have? Lastly, just consider the wind direction. When we get that initial burst of flames when we start the fire, is anyone going to be sat downwind of that? Which way is the smoke going to go? So, we're ready to begin. Now, kids are going to get really excited about using the matches or the striker light to actually start that burst of flame. But the key to successful fire lighting with kids is preparation, and that is essential. You can see how I've made my preparations here. I've got a big pile of kindling. I've got some small firewood, some medium firewood. And then firstly, I've got my tinder box all ready to go. Now, what do I mean by kindling? Kindling is literally matchstick thin twigs. That's what we want. And you can see how big a bundle I've actually got of this stuff to start my fire with. This is what's gonna really give you success. You can have some fun gathering kindling with the kids and turn it into a bit of a game, send them off to all grab 10 sticks of kindling, see who can come back first. But if you can get that across to them, that preparation is the key to success, then they'll have a lot more fun with it because they'll be able to keep their fires going. This is kindling, we use it to light the fire. It's the best way because it's tiny and lights quickly. You need lots of it though, because otherwise, if you don't have lots of it, the fire will go out. There's one other point that's really important to get across to the kids as well, which is demonstrating and helping them to understand the difference between dry wood and green wood. It's no good for burning. What do I mean by green wood? Well, here's a green branch here, and I don't mean kind of literally green, it means it's fresh off the tree and it's still got a lot of moisture in it. So if I try to snap this, you'll see that the bark kind of gets stuck and it's peeling, it's not quite working, it's not snapping cleanly. With a dry stick that's very dead, nice clean break and the wood is brown and dull inside that's good for starting a fire with so next thing we're going to do is another safety point which is get the fire site back to bare earth so you can get a big stick like this and just scrape all that back and get back to bare earth and get rid of any leaf litter that's there and that's teaching the kids to take responsibility for um, making sure the fires aren't going to catch and it also means that any scar that's left on the ground is literally on the bare earth itself and then once we've doused that, we can cover that back over. Once we've got our bare earth, next thing we're going to do is make a little table to put the fire on. So I'll take some of the biggest firewood we've got and make this little platform. The reason for this is if the ground's a bit damp, it lifts the fire off that damp ground. It also allows a bit of air in underneath. Remember, fire needs oxygen in the air to burn. Next, we finally get to delve into our tinder box. So let's open it up. We're going to get our strips of newspaper that are in here. We're going to scrunch them up. They go in the middle of the table. I'd advise having enough strips of newspaper in each box 
for each team of kids lighting a fire. That way everyone gets to go and it saves arguments. Next up out of the tinderbox, cotton wool. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tease these apart so they take light easier. Once you've teased apart all the cotton wool, you're going to take your petroleum jelly out of the tinderbox, get a good blob on your finger, put it onto the cotton wool there, smear it on, and that goes on top of the newspaper in the middle of the table. That petroleum jelly is our rocket fuel. Now, before the kids get too match happy, we're at the stage where they really want to check in with an adult. So make sure you establish that beforehand, because when they actually use the match, they're pretty much going to get one chance at this with the tinder that they've been given. So enough talking, let's get this fire lit. So straight away, match down here on the cotton wool. Matches go back in the box. And then straight away, I'm gonna grab the kindling, split it into two, and then put that as a little pyramid between, on top of the tinder. And the trick is to leave it. Kids love poking the fires, and they just poke, 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 and end up putting it out. So tell them just to stay back. I can see the wind's blowing and the smoke's going that way, so it's going away from me. And if we hear that crackling, that's good, that's wood burning. So now I'm adding the medium firewood and just putting it on and not putting too much on at once. That's another key to tell the kids. Just a little bit at a time. And because we've done all our preparation, everything we need for the fire is here. We don't have to run off and think, ah, we've run out of firewood we can get the fire to a point where a couple of the kids could stay with it and a couple more could go off and get more firewood if you wanted it. But it's not in risk of going out. One other thing that we found kids love to do is once the fire's going, they love to just get a big ball of dry grass, throw it on top, and actually we don't want to encourage that because that can make the fire a bit uncontrolled. So establish that rule beforehand. Once they've used that initial tinder, that's it. It should just be burning firewood then. And there we go. The pink one. This is the aftermath. Um, Still on fire. Still on fire. That is the aftermath. Oh, keep it. Mm. You eat it. Oh, that's hot. Mm. Yeah. It's still good. Are you going to eat? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> what we need to do is keep those flames yeah. going up, guys, to get that really cooking. So, the kids have had their fire. Now we need to teach them how to put it out safely and just as importantly, be responsible with our environment and leave no trace of our fire. And that's a really important philosophy of the bushcraft world that we want to pass on to kids. You can turn uh, leaving no trace of the fire into a bit of a game, pretend that there's some enemy tracking the kids and they really don't leave any mark of their camp that's been here. So, ready to put the fire out responsibly? This is how we do it. Let's get that source of water that's close by and extinguish the flames. Watch out for any steam that will be up there. Don't be shy with the water. Once we've done that, we're gonna use a stick and we're gonna start mixing this around, making sure that the water has got to all parts of those embers and it's cooling them down sufficiently. Kids love making mud. So once you as the adult is happy that the embers are cool enough, you can actually touch them and check them with your hands. If they're cool enough to touch, then you know that they're cool enough to scatter out into the environment. This is a great excuse for the kids to get their hands muddy and mix the embers around. So once our embers are cool enough, we need to go scatter the ashes. So let's scatter these cool ashes. It's much better to scatter them over a wider area than just leaving a big pile of old charred remains. So all kids' hands should be suitably filthy now. And the last thing we're gonna do is check that the uh, ground is cool enough to touch, which it is. Then what we can do is get some leaf litter and twigs and scatter them across the ground. Done. So that's how I teach kids to light fires safely and responsibly outdoors. But it's just a way, not necessarily the way. So if you've got methods that work really well for you, I'd love to hear about it. Just leave a comment below. Thanks very much for watching. We've got more free resources and information about our work at woodlandclassroom.com and you can check out more videos here on our YouTube channel. Right, I'm gonna go wash my hands.